From the Huntington Bank Studio, this is Colts 360. To it, baby! Yes! He might have got out of there. And that's it! That one's gonna hurt a little bit. That's a good drag. Training camp in the books and the regular season is now just one week away. I'm Lara Overton and we are getting you ready for kickoff 2020 right now on Colts 360. Without the preseason, the Colts took advantage of two opportunities to scrimmage within Lucas Oil Stadium and it was evident there's quick chemistry between T.Y. Hilton and his new quarterback, Philip Rivers. The ghost was mic'd up as he gets ready for regular season action. Hey man, let's go out here and compete, baby. Let's give everything you got, man. Nothing's promised, man. Let's go out here and just have fun, man. Make plays with one another. Get better on three. One, two, three. Yes, Let's go. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! Another day, baby. Put on the show. I see you, one seven. Two five. Hey, it's hey, my guy out here. It's my guy out here. Two five. It's my guy. You can't call him Marlon, man. His name is Marlon. <laughs> Pitt, what up, Pitt? Let's go. Oh. One position group you can always count on to bring the juice no matter if it's game day or a midweek practice is the Colts linebacking contingent. And if you've ever wondered what a day in the life of a Colts linebacker is like, Anthony Walker delivers as we put the GoPro on him to take us through one practice day with the Colts linebackers. He with us? Never. He with us? Uh, man, never. I'm never with you. Too far with us? You know what it is. No. -uh. Ain't no double team. We don't need it. We gonna act them today though. LB go three, LB go three, one, two, three. LB. Let's go. Here we go, baby. Let's go. We out here in the trenches getting that work. Play it. No spy, no spy. Boom, boom. Boom. Oh, D. Oh, I thought you beat that. Coach, I think I need to go with the receiver. I think you can too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. Hello. Hey, let's just run to the ball. Fuck out. Let's get it. Let's finish, O. Let's finish, D. Up next, head coach Frank Reich joins us with the development he's seen in the first month of work inside the building and shares the difficulty in making those necessary roster cuts ahead of week one. That's next on Colts 360. Back now on Colts 360 and joined by head coach Frank Reich. Coach, last week you were able to get in two scrimmages down at Lucas Oil Stadium in addition, obviously, to those practices you had here at the complex. Where did you see the most benefit in particular from those practice sessions down at Lucas Oil with the absence of any preseason game opportunities? Yeah, I think there was benefit on several on several fronts. You know, one is just the you know, the off the field stuff, the routine, you know, what's our, what's our pregame routine, the locker room, um, all those things that especially the new players are, are not familiar with. So 
you know, we're able to get those out of the way because when you get to the regular season, you don't want any distractions as far as, hey, you don't want any emotional energy going towards where's my locker? You know, what about my, does my uniform fit? You know, all those things. So getting that accomplished was important. You know, secondly, just being in the stadium again and that, that atmosphere, you know, without fans, um, I, you know, what that feels like when we're piping in crowd noise. So, so some of those things were important. And then thirdly, uh, and most importantly, is the work, the actual work that you get on the field. You know, we're able to, you know, just continue to build our execution in all three phases. So uh, I thought it was mission accomplished. You've noted several times throughout training camp that this has certainly been an elevated intensity, the workload, the physicality. Does that come mostly from what you guys have coaches, you guys as coaches have demanded from the players, or is it players really coming in ready to work and they're setting the bar and setting the expectation themselves? Yeah, I mean, I think it's both, but what we're really looking for is the players to lead the way and set and set the bar and the expectations as far as how we're going to practice. You know, coaches, we're going to push. You know, we we got to do our jobs. I mean, that's that's pushing these guys, holding them to the standards that we have as a team, and demanding the best. Um, but it's really us working together and the players, and we have the kind of leadership in the locker room, you know, that gets that done. So, um, really excited about the intensity. You know, we probably went a little shorter in our practices this year. Um, the length of our, the duration of our practice was shortened. And we really put an emphasis on the speed and intensity, letting the players know up front, these are gonna be shorter as long as they're more intense and fast. And, th and that's what we got. On the days we've been out there at practice, we were able to notice that there was a sign added to the outside of the indoor practice facility. It has three, three words in bold, sacrifice, eritas, and focus. What is the significant, uh, significance of those three words in your message to your team leading up to the regular season? Yeah, I mean, we've talked a lot this, this preseason that, you know, we know what our foundation is. You know, we got tr our three T's, trust, toughness, and team. When these three words of sacrifice, eritas, and focus are the pillars. So you got the foundation at the bottom, you got the pillars coming up. These are the principles that guide us. They're, they're different than the values that we stand on. The principles guide us and, and are kind of you know, really guide the expectations of our daily behavior. So, you know, sacrifice we define as, you know, give to gain, you know, give to gain. Eritas is excellence through competition, you know, and, and focus is be here now. So uh, those are the kind of three principles that will carry us through the year. And speaking of sacrifice, how proud have you been of your team in limiting the amount of positive cases that you've seen, the procedures and protocols that they've all adhered to, obviously being very strict in what they're doing, not obviously just here at the facility, but out in their personal lives as well. Just how proud of you are those guys, are, are you of your guys? And then also how confident are you in those procedures moving forward and throughout the regular season over these next few months? Yeah, I think the league and our team has done a good job with the protocols, our players in particular, like you said, Lara, you know, you know, everyone wants the same thing. You know, we want to we want to accomplish our mission and that's winning the right way. So part of winning the right way is following those protocols, being responsible citizens in this community and, uh, you know, doing the best to kind of stay healthy and, and contain this this uh, virus. And so I think our guys have taken that very seriously and have done a, have done a great job. In speaking with assistant GM Ed Dodds ahead of Saturday's scrimmage, he mentioned that this was really going to be a tough roster to make. And that's a very good thing for you guys in terms of the talent and the depth that you've assembled over recent months. How difficult, though, is this weekend for you from an emotional aspect, especially given just how unusual, how unprecedented this particular offseason has been and the circumstances that you guys have withstood here in these in these past few weeks? Yeah, no doubt it has been unprecedented, the offseason, and part of that, the uniqueness of the offseason, you know, with the pandemic, with all the social unrest, is and all the discussions that we've had and the work that we've done, you know, whether it be via Zoom or now once we've been into camp, you know, it just draws you closer together. You have shared hardships, you have family business that you're attending to, that it matters on and off the field. That just tends to form a bond and uh, a deep bond and that we have, there's a mutual love and respect. And so... To come to a point, to come to a point in the game where you have to reduce the roster, you know it's just tough business. And you know guys are pros, coaches and coaches and players know that this is just part of the process. 
but that doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't make it any easier when you have to sit across from a guy and say, hey, you know, it's just a matter of the numbers game. We have to move on. But the good news is because of the expanded uh, practice squad from 10 to 16, uh, we're going to see a lot of these guys back. You know, we're going to see a lot of these guys back. And, uh, and then even the guys that aren't coming back, they're on a real short list because we felt like we got a lot of winning football players on this roster right now. It seems that there has been quick chemistry developed between Philip Rivers and the wealth of weapons that he has. What excites you most from what you've seen really in a limited span of time to watch this offense grow and develop? And what do you need to see now over the next week or so leading up to week one in Jacksonville? Yeah, no, it's been important to see the progression, see us get a little better every day. You know, I think with Philip, you know, having a new starting quarterback, man, it was very fortunate that he was already familiar with the offense. And, um, you know, Phillip's such a strong leader um, and, and, you know, just been a, a very seasoned vet to be able to come in here. And he's a great teammate, wanting to get to know his, his guys, not just on offense, but the defensive players. Um, that's just the kind of person he is. He loves the game. He loves the team. So um, to see that develop has been good. In particular, though, right, it's about execution on the field. So, you know, just to get those little fine tuning in, of the offense in the pass game, in the run game, let him work out the chemistry with T.Y. and others. You could see that progressing as it should. On the flip side, it was DeForest Buckner who headlined the offseason moves from a defensive perspective. And since we've been in camp, there's been heavy discussion on the depth and the competitiveness at defensive line really being a highlight so far of some of those position battles we've seen. How have you seen DeForest really make an immediate impact, not just on that defensive line, but a ripple effect across your defense in its entirety? Yeah, I mean, we've said often how important that three technique is in our scheme. And so having a having a difference maker at that position and you can just see his impact and that's a good way to put it Larry that there is a ripple effect it just the, and, and it's a big ripple okay and really what it's doing is accentuating how good the rest of the defensive line is and that's what that's what we're really excited about we really do feel like we're too deep at the defensive line which is what you want to feel going into the season you know you go down to places like Jacksonville and you're playing in the heat you know, and you're rushing the passer and, you, you know, you need to rotate D-line through and feel good about it. And we're in a position right now where, where we have that strength and we have that confidence and getting for, DeForest was a, was a key part of that. Going into the season, indeed, we are seven days away from opening things up against a divisional opponent on the road in Jacksonville. What will this next week of preparation look like? Just really, just really gearing down. So much of it has been installing the offense, you know, working out all the kinks. Now it's honing the game plan specifically against the Jacksonville defense, a scheme that we're familiar with, but they're familiar with us. So how do we go in there and attack? You know, obviously a few personnel changes for them. Um, so, you know, we got to look deep into those and, and how do we attack there? Um, but this is a good team that we've had a difficult time in Jacksonville the last couple of years that we've been here. So, you know, we got to go down there and play good football against a team that we've struggled with in our division on the road. So I think our guys are going to be ready to go. They're going to be really focused. We'll have a great week of practice and I look forward to getting down to Jacksonville. Coach, thank you so much as always for taking the time. Excited to get this season underway. Thanks, Lara. He delivered one of the most electrifying performances in 2019 and Colts running back Naheem Hines is back for more. His connection with fellow NC State product Philip Rivers and how this deep group of running backs is embracing a heavy workload in 2020. spiraling kick backing up Naeem Hines 25 30 35 40 he's gonna go Naeem Hines a punt return for a touchdown <laughs> here we go again he's at the 40 yard line spins off a block he's at the 45 he's at the 50 near sideline he may go touchdown Naeem Hines his Woo! second punt return touchdown today Nothing short of epic. Those two punt return touchdowns, a December Sunday against Carolina, Naheem Hines. After that game, you told me that you'd had dreams 
where you hadn't even played that well. That dream realized or that dream exceeded rather. How much did that fuel you and motivate you over the course of this offseason building into 2020 and just looking to capitalize on that momentum? Uh, like you said, it's uh, really just focusing and uh, capitalizing on the momentum, as you said. So uh, really, you know, you can only take a step forward or a step back from that. And, you know, all my energy throughout this quarantine time and, uh, you know, in the meetings and extra time off, just training was spent towards, you know, taking that leap forward, uh, taking that next step. This is the third year here. So, uh, you know, you're not a veteran yet, but you're starting to understand how Coach Reich and, uh, you know, Chris Bauer want things here and uh, starting to buy into the program, you're starting to figure out, you know, the guys who belong in this locker room and, you know, quickly uh, you figure out who shouldn't be in this locker room also. So uh, it's just knowing the expectations uh, and taking that next step and working towards that. How did you stay focused? What did your off season look like with not having as much time as you typically would have back here at the facility, having that OTA period, being remote and being off on your own, just connecting on Zooms instead of being here at the facility with your teammates? Well, you know, with the uh, whole uh, worldwide pandemic, it was uh, sad to, you know, not be here, but uh, it was great to have spend some time with family, that uh, extra time with family that I normally don't get to spend. And uh, for me, I'm a motivated guy, so uh, every day I wake up and work out, uh, get two or sometimes three workouts in and uh, play video games and golf. So uh, that's what my day was really uh, focused towards, uh, get my workout in first, uh, getting my treatment in, then golfing and playing video games. So it was uh, really easy for me to stay focused. Well, growing up in Raleigh, you've always been an NC State fan, the campus there in your backyard, and we could pretty much have a chapter of the NC State Booster Club right here within the locker room with yourself, <laughs> Jacoby Brissett and Philip Rivers. We actually have that picture that you posted in the offseason on social media that you were the recipient of the Freshman <laughs> Offensive Player of the Year Award, which is fittingly called the Philip Rivers Award award your just reaction to I'm sure you never thought that this would be a possibility that you guys would be re or united for the first time here in the NFL after watching his career being someone who grew up right there in the backyard of the NC State campus. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's it's really um really crazy. Uh, just even uh, looking at when Philip was at NC State from uh, you know 2000 2003. And I was born in 1996, so uh, I remember uh, not his freshman year, but I remember his last few days there in the bowl games. But uh, it's a, uh, you know, it's actually crazy, you know, getting that Philip Rivers award in 2015. And uh, even when I got the award, and I saw it, my dad said, "Wow, you got some big shoes to fill." And uh, I'm not gonna say I filled up all those shoes, but uh, the fact that I get to play with Philip and learn from him, and uh, you know, just him being a seasoned vet, I've learned a lot from you know guys like him. And even uh, Costanzo, they've been around a long time, just, uh, you know, trying to soak in that knowledge and try to s maybe not stick around as long as 17 years, but, you know, hopefully stick around a long time. You mentioned that deep group of backs, one that saw the addition of Jonathan Taylor in the draft. How much are you guys all feeding off of one another and how much do each of your strengths and weaknesses really complement each other to create so many different options within this offense? Um, it's it's really crazy. Uh, just thinking about the types of guys that we have in that room and uh, all the great players, it's it's amazing. And then, you know, just uh, being in that locker room, we all, like being in the locker room and being in the room, it's like every time I'm watching a rep of them, I'm learning something new because they do something a little bit different than me. So uh, it's a bunch of competition in there. We're all getting better. And, uh, you know, even with, uh, you know, Jordan, Marlon, and myself, it was a great room. And then with Jonathan, we just got like three times better. He's a great player. I'm excited to see what he's going to do. And, you know, like I said, we're different backs, but it's uh, – it's definitely a different energy in that room just so you know we can see like you know the we're, we can see we're seeing the heights we can reach but you know nothing's given we got to go out there every Sunday and earn it but uh, there's definitely potential with our room. Well as we wrap up this edition of Colts 360 we have Darius Leonard mic'd up at Lucas Oil Stadium. You're one who has to go against Darius each and every day in practice so just tell me about what that experience is like and then we're going to see the video for ourselves. Oh man uh, it's it's a, it's a really challenging experience. Uh, Darius is one of the best players, if not one of the best linebackers in the NFL. And, you know, going against him in practice where, you know, he gets to pick out your tendencies, uh, certain concepts. Honestly, he's probably like the most annoying player I've ever played. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, just a, a good way because he's so good at what he does. And uh, certain tendencies he picks up off of me, uh, you know, between the connection between Philip and I and also just, you know, it's hard playing against great players. So it's about – five or ten times harder when they kind of have a beat on what you're doing. Trenches on three, trenches on three, one, two, three. Trenches. Let's get paid, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Yes, sir, baby. Yes, sir. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it today, baby. Let's have a day, baby. Let's run around and make plays. Woo! Ow!
Ow, Bobby. In my ear. First pitch of the game. Let's fly around. Let's go. Hit on three. One, two, three. Hit. I feel weird. I feel nobody so cares. weird. No, for one, nobody's here. For two, I like want to talk trash, but it's absolutely nobody down here to talk trash to. This is this is pretty weird. So baby, be you, don't be nothing else, and you have fun. No, 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 Philip! Woo! 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 -wee! Yes, sir, that's why it comes down, baby. Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Yes, sir. Second half on the way, yeah, I can't beat this. Bop, bop, bop. Sorry, love you. <laughs> Come on, baby. I know, I know who you are. I know you like to jiggle. So I'm gonna sit here, and I'm gonna stop my feet. I'm gonna let you do all that dancing, and as soon as you make your next move, I got you. It sounded good until I just got your one on one, one, on one out there. You got me, I wasn't ready for that. You weren't ready? No, but you I. You weren't ready, you had the ball. You know where you're going. I don't. There you go, yep, yep, yep. You know I got you. Get it. Get it. Say hi to the camera. Say hi to the camera. You gotta find it. You got 10 seconds to find it. Look by the goal post. On the ground. <laughs> uh, oh, man. More Colts football coming your way this weekend as we continue revisiting some Colts classics with Tony Dungy. Sunday on CBS 4 at noon, it's the Colts 2003 Monday Night Football comeback at Tampa Bay.